Welcome to this short course on usability engineering for medical devices and IEC 62366-1. I am Michaela Kauer-Frenz and I have been a usability engineer for almost 20 years now. And in my opinion, this is one of the most fun and rewarding jobs you can have. I am the founder of Custom Medical and member of the German Standardization Committee. In this video, I would like to show you what a pragmatic usability engineering approach can look like. The goal of this course is that you should get a basic understanding of what usability engineering for medical devices is and why you should care about it. And to be honest, I want you to get excited about the topic. Usability engineering is the chance to get in touch with the real users of your product and it's the point where you can see how much benefit you bring to the life of others. I don't want you to miss out on that. Based on that, you should be able to figure out if the full course on usability engineering that we offer on medicaldevicehq.com could help you in your job or career. The full course is similar to this one, but much more comprehensive with more in-depth information and quizzes at the end of each topic to test your knowledge and understanding. On the full course, you will also receive a course certificate, which many auditors will be looking for. Most of you will have a good gut feeling when it comes to judging the everyday user friendliness of products in general. This is especially true if you are using a lot of technical devices in your everyday life. Normally, it is easy to assess for oneself if the product fits the needs and if you have a very user-friendly product, the use of that will often feel free of effort. That is mainly true whether you're using a medical device or any other type of device. And to be honest, the same is true for the total opposite of this. I think most of you might have experienced devices where you are having a hard time to figure out how to use it even after having tried it for 20,000 times. For me, an example of where this comes true is using my online banking system. I am using the system to approve a lot of transfers that have been prepared for me. Every time I approve one single transfer, I have to go back to the starting point of the online banking system and click my way through all the single steps again, even though I am always approving like 20 or 30 transfers at a time. And in addition to that, it's a two-way authorization system. So, you know, I need to approve the transfers in my online banking account on the web and at the same time, I need to approve them in the app. But the app shuts down every five minutes, despite the fact that I'm using it permanently. So I think you get an impression of how annoyed I am. And that is what usability engineering is all about. Understanding who is your user, knowing what their tasks are and seeing in which environments the tasks are performed. And then you just have to build devices that consider all this, just unlike my bank did. But because we are talking about the development of a medical device, it is not as easy as that. When it comes to medical devices, user friendliness is not the only goal of usability engineering. In fact, it is not even the primary goal. According to the International Standard for Usability Engineering for Medical Devices, usability engineering is defined as the application of knowledge about human behavior, abilities, limitations, and other characteristics of the design of the medical devices, including software, system, and tasks to achieve adequate usability. So far, so good. The standard then goes on defining usability as a characteristic of the user interface that facilitates use and thereby establishes effectiveness and efficiency and user satisfaction in the intended use environment. All that sounds very promising, at least in my opinion. But what is said before is that the whole standard is only concerned about usability as far as it relates to safety. So it doesn't have a new definition, but just add the reduced scope to it. So the standard, which is defining the application of usability engineering to medical devices, is the IEC 62366-1 2015, with its first amendment from 2020. And strictly speaking, 
when looking at usability engineering from a regulatory point of view, it only relates to the safety of a medical device. And therefore, usability engineering is seen as the process that permits the manufacturer to assess and mitigate risks associated with correct use and use errors in normal use. That's quite a limited scope on usability engineering, but for sure, it makes sense to think about the safety of the medical device first. I will show you an everyday example that makes it clear that user-friendliness and safety are not always going into the same direction. But don't be afraid, in most cases, they will. This little one is carried by its mother in a baby sling. I used to have one for my three little daughters too, and they really loved it. The carrier is used similar like a backpack, only worn in front of you. It is closed by a safety buckle. This is often really annoying because, you know, you need to fumble with two hands behind your back and figure out which three buttons to press at the same time. Nevertheless, I would never, never exchange the safety buckle for an easier way to open and close it. Imagine the buttons are somehow pressed by accident. This would open the buckle and in worst case, the shoulder straps could slip and the baby falls to the ground. One of the worst nightmares of mothers and fathers. I think everybody would agree that in this case, a restricted user friendliness is acceptable due to the increased safety for the child. When it comes to this particular feature of the product, good usability equals poor user friendliness. And that is totally fine. <laughs> Therefore, usability engineering can be seen as an integral part of design control and risk management. And you will find that you work quite closely together with the risk management team. Still, you know, I am usability engineer at heart, and I will show you how to design safe devices according to the IEC 62366-1 while still having a great user friendliness. I would like you to understand that usability engineering is not something that you have to do, but something that you should love to do. And in most cases, usability will overlap with user friendliness. Usability engineering is the step in the development of medical devices where you design the safe device. But it is also the part where you design a successful device and where you decide whether your device will be loved by your users and they will run towards it or if they will just run away from it. The bad thing about usability engineering is that it is a structured process and can be easily learned by everybody. In my opinion, good usability engineering is more a craftsmanship than it's an art. It has to do with a lot of practice, the right mindset, and a good understanding of how to get the right information. But after that, anyone can become a great usability engineer. So let's have a look at the process. As discussed earlier, the main part about usability engineering is to understand who uses the device, the task of the users, and the environment in, th in which they will use it. And therefore, the usability engineering process starts with the preparation of the use specification. The use specification is a document that includes all the information about your users. You can imagine it as an extended form of the intended use. And getting that information right is really crucial for the success of your product. That becomes really clear if you have a look at this example. Imagine you are talking about a glucose measuring device. If it is used in a home use environment by a young child, you will need to prepare a different device compared to a device that will be used by a professional caregiver in a hospital environment. Even more, the same could be true if you are looking only at home use environment. Imagine you are comparing a device that will be used only by kids with one that will be used only by elderly people. They will most probably be designed completely differently. To make sure that your device will be a good and safe one, you have to take great care of identifying the right user group and writing down all the information that makes this group so very special. And please remember, this is not only including characteristics of the person, but also characteristics of the task and the use environment. After you've figured out 
what your users are like, you're starting to analyze what could go wrong with regards to safety and the user interface of the device. In the standard, because safety is the primary goal of usability engineering, analyzing potential safety risks make a total of three steps. I just grouped them together for the sake of simplicity in this short video. In the full course, however, you will get the full dose of analyzing the risks. In general, analyzing the risks is similar to identifying hazards and answering questions relating to the safety of the device that many would be doing as part of a risk management process according to the ISO 14971 standard. However, for the usability engineering process, those steps are restricted to the safety of the user interface. When I say user interface, I mean much more than just the screens and buttons. If I talk about a medical device, all kinds of accompanying documentation and basically everything that the user can interact with needs to be considered a user interface. Because usability engineering for medical devices is seen as a design control and risk control, this means you have to check whether your risk control attempts were successful. So this is why you will go on deciding which are the things you're going to check in the end. You need to decide upfront what's really relevant because when you're going to design your device to fulfill exactly those requirements and to diffuse the hazard related use scenarios, those hazard related use scenarios you deem as very relevant are going to be part of your final test of the product, the so-called summative evaluation. We'll talk about that later in more detail. The great thing is about starting with the risk in mind that you're now able to define the requirements that come with the goal to omit those risks. So if you want, you can see the requirements as risk control measures. Nevertheless, I would like to encourage you to not only integrate requirements that make a safe device, but also think about the requirements that come to mind when thinking about the use environment and the task of your users. So those requirements that would make a really great device that everybody is delighted to use. Next, you follow up on implementing the requirements into some kind of design. I strongly recommend you not to integrate it into the final device already, but instead to work with mockups or prototypes to make the integration easier and faster to check. That is really important because from my experience, you won't get the design right on the first try. So what comes next is the so-called formative evaluation. This means you're going to test whether your device works safely and properly while you're still working on the development of the device itself. One could say you're testing along the way. Additionally, you can use formative testing to compare different designs, test initial ideas, and get a rough impression of whether you're on the right track or not. To do that, you can even work with very simple forms of prototypes. If you ask me, if it's high gloss, you've invested far too much time in the formative testing, at least at the beginning of your development process. I know you don't like to hear that, but in most cases, you will find out that your first try wasn't perfect. But that's not a problem at all. The usability engineering process foresees the situation and therefore enables you to work iteratively. This means you're going back and you're redesigning your device with all the information that you learned during the test. This is how you proceed with the development until you find out in your last formative test that there's nothing to improve anymore. And that's when you're ready for the summative evaluation. The summative evaluation should demonstrate that the user does not end up in a situation with an unacceptable risk as a result of poor usability. Normally, the summative evaluation follows at the end of the development and is conducted with the production equivalent device or, even better, with the first production units. That's mainly it. As you can see, the process is quite simple and the single steps follow a logical order. If you follow the steps strictly, you will at least end up with a safe and acceptable device. In the full course, however, I will teach you how to come up with a great device too. I hope you get a good understanding of what the core of usability engineering is 
and that you're at least a little bit excited about the topic as well. Just a reminder, subscribe to our YouTube channel and click the notification button so you'll always be the first to know about new content. At medicaldevicehq.com, you can register for my course and see the other courses we offer. Thanks for watching. I will see you in the next video. Bye-bye.